Welcome to another edition of Daily Airline News, focusing on the loss of UPS Flight 2976. I'm Geoffrey Thomas, and delighted to say, joined by my co-host once again, Richard Godfrey in Frankfurt. It's uh, midday in Frankfurt? Yeah, uh, just termed afternoon. Good afternoon. And, uh, <laughs> good evening to you, Geoffrey. <laughs> So, viewers, this episode is 273. It's NTSB UPS Preliminary Report Analysis. As we advised earlier, the NTSB issued a 12-page preliminary report into the tragic loss of UPS Flight 2976, a McDonnell Douglas, now Boeing, MD-11. Richard and I have had time to do an initial analysis of the report and now present to you our findings. But before we do... Just a word, please do subscribe to us. Please do like us. Keep those great comments and questions coming. We really do appreciate your support. Now, Richard, can you start off with an overview of the basic facts of this particular MD-11 flight? Sure. So UPS uh, 2976 uh, crashed on the 4th of November uh, 2025. And that was just after takeoff from Louisville, Kentucky, and killing, unfortunately, 14 people and injuring 23, two of them seriously. The left engine separated from the aircraft during rotation and a fuel-fed fire resulted. And this also affected the center engine in the tail as well. And the aircraft lost its ability to climb and both rolled and veered to the left. The aircraft struck buildings and power lines just beyond the end of the runway and uh, crashed immediately after takeoff. We're showing a screenshot with the summary of the factual information from the NTSB preliminary report. The flight was bound for Honolulu and was uh, fully tanked with fuel for that uh, long flight. The weather at the time was fine, a slight wind of six knots, uh, the temperature 17 degrees uh, centigrade, uh, good visibility, and unfortunately the aircraft caught fire uh, both during the roll uh, takeoff and after impact. And with that amount of fuel on board, of course, uh, there was a huge fireball. Mm. And Unfortunately, three killed on board the aircraft and 11 killed uh, on the ground. Mm. Now, Richard, what about the history of this flight? Uh, well, I know we went, uh, showed the viewers this morning, uh, earlier I should say, uh, the images, but perhaps we can run through those again. Yeah. Um, the NTSB in their report uh, show a number of uh, pictures. Uh, the first one just at rotation and the left engine is still intact and properly mounted on the wing. The second picture shows the engine lifting up and separating um, from the wing. It actually damaged uh, quite a bit of the the wing in the process of that uh, separation and parts of the the wing and the engine pylon and the engine itself were found on the runway and beside the runway. The next picture shows the left engine um, flying over the aircraft towards the right side and it was found uh, quite some distance to the right of the runway um, near a taxiway. And the third picture also shows that obviously fuel line was cut and f a fuel-fed fire started. 
and that spread from the left wing towards the rear of the uh, aircraft. The fourth picture is uh, shows the fire engulfing the aircraft. It also shows the engine flying over uh, the aircraft. It was obviously still uh, rotating. Um, and the fifth picture, the fire continues to engulf the aircraft. The engine is seen plummeting vertically downwards to the ground and the aircraft starts tilting over to the left. And the sixth picture uh, shows the fire engulfing the aircraft, the center engine especially. And there is a separate fire to be seen in this picture, number six, where there is exhaust fire from the center engine on top of the wing fire over the left wing. So quite clearly the center engine was also affected um, and this then amounts to a dual engine failure uh, just on takeoff. And in all of these pictures, you can see the aircraft is struggling to get off the ground. It's uh, no more than a few feet uh, off the ground. Mm. Richard, the NTSB has now given us details of the pilot's uh, experience, and it appears that they were very experienced. Can you um, give us details of, uh, of that, please? Yeah, so the captain was the pilot monitoring, and he had 8,613 total hours of flight experience and 4,918 on this type of aircraft. The first officer was the pilot flying, and he had 9,200 total hours of flight experience and 994 hours on the uh, accident airplane type. And then there was a relief officer who had a total of 15,250 uh, flight hours of experience and 8,775 hours on the uh, accident aircraft type. So the crew were extremely uh, experienced. Mm. Now, what about the black boxes, Richard? Uh, what did the NTSB tell us about those? So the airplane was equipped with an FDR and a CVR, flight data recorder and cockpit voice recorder, and both were recovered from the accident scene and transported to the NTSB lab in Washington, D.C., and the data from both was downloaded successfully. The CVR contained about two hours and four minutes of recorded data, including the entire accident flight. And the FDR contained 63 hours of data, and that spanned the previous 24 flights and the accident flight in mm -hmm. entirety. And the FDR records about 450 parameters of flight data. So there's a lot of information available to the NTSB. And they formed, as usual, a CVR group and an FDR group um, to analyze that data. Mm. Now, Richard, the NTSB says the pylon of the number one engine was cracked. Can you give us some fine detail on this uh, issue? Yes, and the report contains uh, some detailed uh, photographs of, of the uh, evidence. So they recovered uh, the separated left pylon and the left pylon aft mount. And in a picture we're showing now, you can see the fracture of both the forward and the aft lug on the left pylon aft uh, mount. Mm. So they go into uh, great detail in the report already. Mm. 
Now, the NTSB has also given us detail on the runway recovery operation and the wreck ex examination. Can you uh, walk us through that? Yes, they've obviously done a very thorough job um, and gathered all of the uh, pieces that were found on the runway or near the runway uh, at the airport, and then also all the pieces found at the crash site. Um, we're showing a picture of the left wing clevis and the fractured spherical bearing. Um, and uh, they're showing, they show a picture of the actual part that they found and what a new part looks like. So mm -hmm. they were comparing um, the damage as found with how the part looks like when it's uh, newly manufactured. And they asked for what is called an exemplar uh, aircraft. So that's exactly the same type of aircraft. And so they can compare uh, what it should look like with what it actually uh, looks like in each case. Mm. And they went through taking all of the parts they found apart and separating out each item. We're showing a, another screenshot from the NTSB report where they separate out the spherical bearing and the attachment hardware uh, from the left wing uh, clevis. And you can see each nut and bolt in detail. Mm. Now, the Richard, the NTSB has, has also given us uh, some colour around the materials laboratory examination that they conducted. Can you explain this process? Yeah. Um, we've shown in previous episodes the uh, drawings of the uh, pylon and the mm. engine uh, mount to the pylon and the pylon mount to the wing. And that's what NTSB do in the report. They go back uh, and get the original drawings from Boeing and then they get this exemplar aircraft. So they go into great uh, detail and they show both the drawings and pictures from the exemplar installation of the pylon aft mount to the wing clevis. And uh, I have to say, it's an impressive job that they've done in a very short space of time. Now, they also detailed the maintenance and um, said that the crash aircraft was compliant with all FAA requirements. Can you give us some uh, detail on that, Richard? Yeah. The aircraft had recently undergone a heavy maintenance visit to San Antonio for 44 days, and that was completed on the 18th of October. And since then, there have been 28 flights of this uh, aircraft. And the engine pylon undergoes a detailed inspection and maintenance every six years. And the next detailed inspection was not yet due. So the question then comes uh, whether f fatigue was happening faster than expected or they also look at the american airlines flight 191 disaster and in that case the damage was caused during maintenance and uh, in the event of the american airlines 191 crash there was maintenance which took place about two months before the crash so the question comes, was the maintenance, uh, the last maintenance done correctly? Uh, or was this simply uh, fatigue, metal fatigue, that happened sooner than expected? But the clear message from the NTSB report is that the maintenance was done regularly on the mm. aircraft. And just for those viewers who don't recall, the in the case of the American Airlines Flight 191, the maintenance issue that Richard's referring to was the pylons uh, on these aircraft and all aircraft have to be re replaced after a certain number of cycles. 
and what American was doing and a couple of other airlines as well, what's supposed to happen is the engine is detached from the pylon then the pylon is detached from the wing. A new pylon is attached to the wing and then the engine is attached to the pylon. But American decided to do it differently and not per um, uh, the schedule. And they took the engine and pylon off as one unit. And then when they put it back, um, you've got a very, very heavy uh, engine with a pylon attached, moving it into a very small space. And during that operation, uh, it uh, cracked. They set up a crack. And that's what eventually failed, and that's what caused that. That was the initial cause of that accident. Um, so, Richard, um, the NTSB has issued safety actions. Uh, can you run us through those? Sure. So, the UPS um, themselves grounded the MD 11F fleet on the 7th of November on the advice of Boeing, and FedEx followed suit. The next day, the 8th of November, the FAA grounded all MD-11 and MD-11F uh, freighter aircraft worldwide. And this was followed on the 14th of November, extending it to all DC-10 series aircraft because they have a similar design and manufacture of the engine pylon and wing attachment. And the emergency directive says that all wing engine pylons must undergo a detailed inspection and all corrective action required must have been satisfactorily performed before further flight. So we'll be watching the worldwide fleet of DC-10 and MD-11 aircraft and see how soon they start uh, getting back. I think it was in 2020, and it's been with UPS ever since. So that's a little bit of a sidelight. So, Richard, look, uh, thank you very much for that analysis. What we don't know is um, exactly what caused that crack, whether it was a maintenance issue or, a, as you said, uh, fatigue uh, earlier than expected. Yeah, and, of course, a preliminary report is not expected to mm. go into the root cause mm. um, and uh, it's also not there to apportion blame. Mm. The key of, uh, goal of a preliminary report is to make any safety recommendations and the FAA have, uh, as we mentioned, issued emergency airworthiness directives uh, that apply to all uh, this series of aircraft, a similar aircraft worldwide. Mm. This M NTSB preliminary report is in stark contrast to the Air India one, isn't it? It is indeed, and uh, I think the NTSB has done a, a really a great job in a very short space of time. They have, absolutely. So viewers, look, thank you very much indeed for watching us. Um, we will be back tomorrow. Uh, we've moved our Transworld Airways Flight 800 episode, the, the first of several, maybe first of three, I think. We've moved it out a day, obviously, and we'll be back tomorrow with that. Um, so please do tune in for that. So Richard, thank you very much indeed for your analysis. You're very welcome. And viewers, please do subscribe to us. Please like us. Please keep those wonderful comments and questions coming. And thank you indeed for all those who are supporting this channel. We sincerely appreciate your support. And we look forward to your company tomorrow. And wherever you are in the world, have a great weekend. Thank you.